what's in your essential knitting kit? Knitting needles, scissors, sewing needle, um, tape measure. Well, they are some of the essentials that I have in my knitting kit as well. But today I'm going to share with you uh, all the other things that I consider essential and that I have in my essential knitting kit. So my name is Anakin and I am a knitting designer and teacher and I live in the southwest of England. So as I said today, I'm going to share with you what's in my essential knitting kit, what I consider essential. So I'm not saying that these are the essential things that everyone needs to have. These are just the things that I consider essential um, for the kind of things that I tend to knit. You may have other things that you consider essential. You also have to adjust your uh, knitting kit to what you can afford, what your budget is. Um, a lot of things that we use in knitting come in like basic versions, more affordable versions and more high end versions. Um, and I have a mixture. Some of the things I have are fairly cheap. Some are a little bit more expensive. But today I'm going to share with you what's in my essential knitting kit. So welcome to my YouTube channel. If you're new here, welcome very much. I'm glad you found me. If you're a returning viewer, thank you very much for joining me again. Please consider subscribing if you haven't already. And if you are a current subscriber, thank you very much for your support. Um, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and please leave a comment and tell me what's in your essential knitting kit. OK, so let's get started. Um, one of the first things that you need is knitting needles. Now, what kind of knitting needles do you like knitting with? I actually prefer circular needles and I actually really recommend considering interchangeable needles. You may find that every time you pick up a new knitting pattern, it uses a different needle size. Sometimes it might need straight needles, sometimes circular needles, sometimes long circular needles, sometimes short circular needles, sometimes double pointed needles. And you might find that you pick up a knitting pattern, look at the needle size, and then when you go to buy yarn, you end up buying the needles as well. There's nothing wrong with that. But if you consider getting an interchangeable set of uh, needles, it gives you the most common sizes that you might need and it also gives you a length of cable. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, here is my kit. This bag is quite old um, and a little bit dirty. I don't need to take everything out and wash it or replace it. So this is the interchangeable, um, this is the Chow Gu interchangeable kit. So the kit comes in a bag like that. Now my kit is quite chunky because I've added loads of extras to it. I also store all my thick circular needles loose in the middle. Um, so let me just take those out quickly. I need to really review my knitting needle storage um, method because I have a lot of um, loose, I have a lot of fixed uh, circular needles as well. Um, which don't really need to be stuck in the middle of this case, but it's, I just find it really easy to keep them all together. So that's all my fixed needles. Um, these are my interchangeable ones. So with interchangeable needles, you can either buy the whole set as a kit or you can buy the needle tips and the cables separately. So you can, the kits come in a certain size range and do check that size range before you buy to make sure that they come in the size that you use the most. And you might find that you use two or three sizes more than any other sizes. And you don't necessarily want to buy a whole kit and then find out you only use a few other sizes. If you're going to um, buy an interchangeable needle set, you want to make sure you're going to use all the sizes. If you find that you only use some of the sizes, you might want to buy the individual ones and build up your own kit. So you've got the um, needle tips and the cables. And the cables come in loads of different lengths from... Um, lengths that make from like 40 centimeter circular needle up to 120, maybe 160. Um, I find that the kits tend to come with two or three, like maybe a 40, 60, and an 80 centimeter long cable. Um, but you can buy extra cables, so you might you, you might find it's better just to make your own kit. Uh, this is a shorter one, obviously, and. The reason I like um, interchangeable needles is because you can mix them much. So if you've got a project that uses four millimeter, 80 centimeter long cable for the body or and 40 centimeter long cable for the neckline, for example, you can just 
swap your cables out so it makes it easy and you don't have to buy new needle tips if you have a sweater they use as three and a half millimeter for the rib and four millimeter for the body you can leave the stitches on the cable and just swap swatch switch the needle tips out so it makes it nice and easy one thing to be aware of, of the interchangeable sets is that they don't always come in the really tiny sizes so a lot of them only go don't go below a three millimeter or 3.25 millimeters so do wear, be aware of that then you may have to buy the fixed circulars you may also think well i knit everything on straight needles well that doesn't matter because anything you can knit on straight needles you can knit on circular needles so you can use circular needles just like you use straight needles and i have a video on um circular needles how and why how to use them why you want to consider them different ways of knitting on circular needles and i will link to that video below i also have some needle reviews at the time of filming this i have needle reviews up on chogu nipro which is also known as knitters pride um and liquor if i add any more um needle reviews i will add them to my circular needle and needle review playlist on youtube so i will link to that playlist below so you can see um all the latest videos so i find that uh, having an interchangeable set for one thing it saves me a lot of space because it's fairly compact and it also saves me um worrying about whether i have the right size or not because i have sizes there right through from three millimeter up to probably 10 or 12 millimeter i rarely actually use anything thicker than a five millimeter so i've taken those out of my main kit and put them um, somewhere else um just to make more room for all my spares <laughs> but i really need to look for a slightly better story solution than what i've currently got to my needles Okay, so what else would you want to need apart from your knitting needles? Well, you want some kind of notions kit and you'd want um, a few important notions. So the basic ones that you want to consider are a tape measure. We all need a tape measure. Um, I like these ones that you can pull back. Do be a little bit careful if you have the loose tape measures and you have one that maybe is quite a few years old. Just double check every so often that it hasn't stretched. So you might want to compare it to another tape measure or to a fixed to a um, plastic or wooden ruler because they can sometimes stretch over time i find with these not this particular brand necessarily but these in general that they tend to the um retraction thing tends to break before the knitting needles break another thing you want to consider is um just opening up my notions case here um is some kind of um sewing needle so you need something to weave in your end so tapestry needle sewing needle whatever you want to call it uh you will need something to weave in all your ends and that kind of thing i really like these can you see what's the best way of showing this hold it up against there i don't know can you see it's got like a really big there you go can you see that it's got a really big loop on here um that means that whatever thickness of yarn i have i can get it through that loop this one is um, clover and it comes in a pack of three and this is the smallest one and the biggest one is huge and it does feel a little bit like you're knitting you're sewing in with a um, cable needle so I tend to mainly use this small one I have several of them um, Nipro do something similar but they're a different color but I really like those because I don't have to worry about threading the needle um, because any needle any size yarn will get through here even the really thin yarn will get through here so i really like those you will also need scissors i've got i like tiny scissors i also collect scissors i've got loads of really pretty scissors there we go um are there any more here no so i like small scissors um, I find them more accurate. I don't need massive, great big scissors in my knitting kit. So I like the small scissors. Another thing that you may not consider essential, but which I consider essential, are stitch markers. Excuse me, I'm just trying to close off my notions kit again. There we go. So this is the box that I keep all my notions in. And I like my stitch markers. I use stitch markers a lot. Um, I use these little tiny ones. Can you see those? They're really tiny ones. Don't know if you can see those. Um, they are from Coco Knits. 
and they come in a box of different colored ones um, like a mixed color ones and they fit on needles below a four millimeter and below then i got these which are slightly bigger hang on see if i can find a color you can actually see this time so i got these kind of ring ones you see those ring ones with a bead on them they're slightly bigger they probably fit up to a five millimeter um i use those a lot and then i've got some bigger ones i don't use needles much bigger than a four millimeter very often got some bigger ones um i've also got some pretty ones so like these these are made by abby from um orchidine luxury yarns and they have a lava bead on them and i can actually put a drop of essential oils and when that hangs from my knitting i can then smell the essential oils so that's really cute um abby sent me a set of those um and then i have some other big ones in here some ring ones some diamond ones these are from the knitting gift shop so i have a selection of different types of um stitch markers i also have some um different types of stitch markers so those that i just showed you are ring markers so they sit on your knitting needle between your stitches so when you get to them you just slip them from one needle across to the other so i use ring markers mainly uh, to mark off pattern repeats and to mark off groups of stitches so they sit between your stitches on your needle and then when you get to them when you're knitting a row you just slip them from one needle across to the other i do have a tutorial on using stitch markers so i will link to that below um, you can see all my tutorials on my website by the way and i'll link to that below as well so um, the things i use ring markers for is to mark off pattern repeats and um for example if i've got loads of pattern repeats across the row and i'm struggling to keep track of them then i will put a marker between each pattern repeat it can help you keep your place in your pattern so if you're doing a more complex pattern you might want to put in a marker between each pattern repeat just to keep track of where you are sometimes if i have a pattern that has an edging on each end for example i might put a pattern i might put a marker to mark where the edging is so when i'm knitting across i know when i get to the edging if i have a row that has different stitch patterns so maybe part of the row is stocking stitch and part is a lace pattern or a cable pattern i might put a marker when i come to where i go from stocking stitch to a lace pattern just so i don't forget um different things like that so you can use stitch markers for loads of different things and i find a lot of people aren't familiar with stitch markers and haven't used them before but they're really really useful the other type of stitch marker that i use a lot are these kind of uh, lockable stitch markers this one looks like a padlock and you basically just snap that one in like that you can get them in plastic ones and you can also get them in metal ones like that i prefer these metal ones and i have loads of those um but i have a few other plastic ones as well and these are really useful for actually attaching into your fabric so you would use these i mean you can use these on your needles because they are thick so they will sit on your needle but you can also attach them into your fabric like that so they will sit in your fabric and then you can take them off and i use these for things like if i'm knitting a shawl with a, a spine a spine stitch i might want to mark that spine stitch because usually i have to increase either side of that spine stitch so i'll quite often put a marker on it to make sure i don't forget if i drop a stitch i will quite often put a marker on it so if i find i've dropped the stitch somewhere else in the row and i can't immediately pick it up and fix it i will quite often put um, a stitch marker like this through it so that it doesn't come undone um if i want to count repeats so if i'm working repeats um so i've got to work 10 repeats or i'm doing um decreases or increases for a sleeve for example the increases or decreases on the sleeve um quite often i will use one of these markers so for each time i've done a say it's a 10 row repeat i've done 10 rows i put a marker in and the next 10 rows i put another marker in somewhere in the middle of the fabric in the middle of the row and that way if i want to know <clears throat> how many repeats i worked i can just quickly count how many markers i've got 
same thing for if I'm going to do increases or decreases. So for example, for the sleeve or any kind of other increases or decreases, especially if there's a lot of them, then sometimes I will put a marker in for each decrease. So I find it easier to count. I can just count all my markers. Of course, you don't need to do that. You can get on perfectly well without it, but it just makes my knitting a bit easier. You can also use these to mark your progress. So for example, um, if you feel like you're not making progress on the on the on your knitting and you just feel like you're knitting and knitting and it's not getting anything any bigger, what I quite often do at the beginning of the day when I start pick up my knitting for the day, I will put this marker somewhere into the fabric on the row I'm on. Then I will knit till the end of the day, and then at the end of the day I can actually see how far I've knitted, or sometimes how little I've knitted. Um I have these as well, um, little, this is a little owl one, I got one that looks a bit like my dog and then I've got um, some yarn ball ones, really pretty ones, um, I sometimes use those as well, um, they're called progress markers and um, you can use them for a lot of stuff but the key thing is that they have to be able to come in and out of your fabric quite easily you can also get ones that are just like a swirl or like a um circle that's not um closed if you like um i find that they, te they tend to fall out quite easily so i prefer some that i can actually fix in place like these because these actually click in place so they're not going to fall out um and they're also not going to get caught in my knitting so i like those another thing that i like to use which a lot of people may not uh, use very often are row counters so you can get different type of row counters you can get little tiny ones that you actually fix onto your needles so if you knit with straight needles you can slide them onto your needle before you cast on so they sit at the end of your needle so if you describe the straight needles they would sit on this bit of your needle not on the tip end but on this bit um, and then you can just every time you knit you have to like turn the thing I don't use those because I don't tend to use straight needles um, I tend to use these which are uh, made by Clover, Nipro do similar ones which I think are pink. I find the Clover ones really good quality. I also sell these in my uh, Yarn Addict online shop if you're interested. But these are really useful. Now i got to remember that it says 12 um, because I grabbed these from a project. So each time you do a row you just click the top and you can lock it here so that when it's in your bag it doesn't click. And then when you finish or if you want to reset it, you can just use these dials on the side to reset it. So I'm just going to reset this one quickly to so there's one um, for each side. So I'm just going to reset this one quickly so that it can go back in my project bag and I don't forget what row I was on. So I find row counters really useful. I use them to count rows. You can also use them to count repeats. So if I have a, um, a pattern that may that maybe is less than 10 rows, I will sometimes use one side to count the rows and the other side to count the repeats. Um, whatever you do, make sure you remember what you're doing. Um, I can I also sometimes use them to count the total number of, of rows that I'm doing on a project. So I find it really good to keep track of the total number of rows I've done on a project. Um, so that I can match. So for example, at the moment I'm knitting a sweater and um, below the armhole I can count the number of rows because I can see the number of repeats of the stitch patterns I've done. But above where I decrease for the armhole, it's just in stocking stitch. So, and I, yes, I can go back and count it later, but I find it really good to keep track of the number of rows I'm doing. So as I'm knitting, I use a row counter so that when I do the front, I can match the number of rows. Also good to do with sleeves so that you match the number of rows on the sleeves so that each sleeve is exactly the same number of rows. Yes, you can go and count later, but sometimes I find it much easier to do the rows. Um, there are the row counters that you can get. I like these because they lock and they're good quality and they last. I have quite a few of these uh, in various project bags. And when I run out of these, I know it's time to finish something. <laughs> I've got too many things on the go. You can also get apps on your phone that will count your rows. Uh, I used to have one, but I haven't used it for a long time.
but there are apps that will keep track of um, several different projects and that kind of thing. So just have a look in the app store or whatever mobile phone you're using and see whether you can uh, find one there. Some of them are free, some of them you have to pay for. So those things that we've covered up to now, I would say are the essentials. So we've got knitting needles, we've got tape measure, we've got scissors, we've got a sewing needle, we've got stitch markers, uh, row counter. Those are my absolute essentials. And I think every knitter should have those, to be quite honest. Next one may not be essential. It's a project bag. So I used to keep my knitting in a carrier bag. It used to be the carrier bag that I got from the yarn shop. And some yarn shops have quite fancy carrier bags these days and paper bags and things. So using a carrier bag from the yarn shop is not a bad idea. Um, but I also really like project bags. So I have project bags. I'm not going to show you all my project bags. But I'm going to show you types of bags that I like to use. So this is one that isn't actually wasn't actually bought as a project bag. It came in a different bag I bought, but it's quite a nice size for a project bag. For a project bag, it also has a um, zip pocket on the inside. So if I wanted to, I could actually put like notions and things that I might need for this project in there. If I need beads, tape measure, scissors, sewing needle, that kind of thing, I could pop that in there. Um, I like to put all the notions and the row counter and the pattern and the yarn and everything I need for a project in a project bag. Now you might want a project bag that's big enough that you can fit all the yarn for the whole project in there or you might just want to use the ball that you're working with. That's entirely up to you. Um, I have project bags from really really tiny, much smaller than this, to quite big ones just depending on what project I'm working on. I try and use the smallest project bag I can get away with. Um, this is one that I actually used for a shawl when I was on holiday recently um, and that's quite a nice size. I have this one which is a lot bigger. This is made by Norwegian Company. It doesn't actually come with that strap. I had that strap from somewhere else and I put it on. Um, some people don't like zipped up bags. This one is quite good because it's made from canvas. So I actually fold the top edge over. One thing you do have to be careful about if you have a zipped up bag is that you don't catch your knit knitting in the zip. And I have done that a lot of times. So what I quite often do is I hold my hand underneath the zip as I zip it up so that I don't catch my knitting in it because that has happened loads of times. Um, this is another project bag. I don't use this as a project bag a lot. This is a bag I've had for a long time. It's actually made of paper, but it doesn't feel like paper. Um, but that's got a project in it at the moment. The advantage of this is that it stands up on the floor and I got two balls for this project. It's a stranded color work project. So it means that it's quite easy to sit out on the floor next to my knitting chair and then I can just pull the yarn straight out of there. And if you don't know really if you spotted, but it's also got a row counter in it. And then, oops, and then I've got another project bag here that's happened to be on my in my office. It says Yarnivore. So I apologize if the um camera is at a slightly different angle. It actually popped out of my um camera holder my tripod thing so I think I've secured it again but while I was talking it just popped out of my um holder so this bag um actually houses my uh yarn advent that I had before Christmas so I just uh, popped all the advents into here so it's got all these mini skeins um and I just popped them all in here to keep them together while I decide what I'm gonna do with that so I think project bag is a nice thing to have. Is it an essential? No, probably not. Um, I view it as an essential. I couldn't do my knitting without it. I have several projects on the go and I have probably too many project bags in different types, different sizes. Some have a zip, some have a drawstring, some are small, some are big. Just depends on what project I'm working on. But I wouldn't say a project bag is an essential, probably, although I view it as an essential uh, for my knitting life. Next thing is wool wash. So do you need a wool wash? Probably not. You can probably wash your knitting in just a normal liquid detergent. I like to use a wool wash. I do a lot of lace that has to be wet blocked. So I always soak that in water with a bit of wool wash. Um, and if I have any hand knits that I need to um, hand wash, I also use wool wash. So my favourite wool wash is a brand called Soak. This one is nearly empty actually, so I need to buy a new one soon. 
um it's not the cheapest one on the market uh i haven't, don't know how long i've had this one for probably a few years a few years probably at least a couple of years if not longer and it's still got the price on it so i paid 15 pounds for that and it is 75 milliliter no it's not it's 375 milliliter um but that's um 75 washes you don't need much of this although it looks expensive you only need a teeny tiny amount so i'm pretty sure this has probably lasted more than 75 washes uh, most of the stuff i wash um is stuff that's going to be blocked um for a new pattern um so not things that are very dirty if i hand if i machine wash things then i tend to just use my normal detergent so my hand it is socks i machine wash and i tend to just use my normal detergent for that rather than a wool wash my, so I said my favourite wool wash is Soak. The other wool wash that I like if I can't get hold of Soak is Eucalan. Eucalan and Soak are the wool washes I tend to use most often, but there are other brands there as well. So do check out what your local yarn store um, stocks. The final thing I'm going to talk about and um, that I consider essential for the kind of things that I knit is a blocking kit. So depending on where you knit, blocking kit may not be essential, although I think you should consider adding some of these items to your knitting kit um so blocking i'm not going to talk in detail about blocking because it would make this video far too long uh what i would say is uh, i have a lot of blocking videos on my website so go and look at those blocking is normally associated with lace knitting but anything can do with being blocked uh, not just lace knitting so some of the things that you might want to have in your blocking kit are something that you can put your knitting on. Now I have the Knit Pro blocking mats, which are um, these kind of jigsaw interlocking mats. So I have two or three packs of them, I think three packs probably, and they kind of lock together like a jigsaw into the size and shape that I need. You, the Knit Pro one is fairly expensive. Um, you can buy these on ebay you can buy them in a lot of um shops like here in the uk you can buy them in i think a lot of some hardware shops sell them i think halford sells something similar i've seen them in aldi on special offer occasionally um but make sure you buy enough so whatever type you buy make sure you buy enough um you will need more than you think so don't just buy one pack uh, unless there's a lot in the pack but Depending on the size of them, you, you know, look at the measurements and try to think about the kind of thing you block and make sure it's big enough that you can fit at least a sweater on it and a large shawl. Um, so that's the blocking mats. You don't need those. When I first started blocking lace, lace I used a um, thick towel on my carpeted floor and that was it. Um, at the moment we've got laminate flooring so I wouldn't want to put just a towel or a blanket or something on the floor. I do think these are essential because you can put pins into these. Which brings me on to the next thing you want to have in your blocking kit is uh, pins. Oops, I just dropped a pin. So those are the pins. They are T-pins. Um, you can use dressmaking pins. They tend to be a little bit flimsy and I find these T-pins much better. They are much thicker and less bendy. Um, you've got to be a little bit careful that your yarn doesn't get caught in this kind of T section of the top, especially if you're working with fine yarn. And I have got my yarn caught in there on quite a few occasions. Again, you will need quite a few pins or buy more than you think you will need. So I would say absolutely essential in your blocking kit is um, the blocking mats and the pins. The pins are really essential. You may also want to consider something called knit blockers from Knit Pro or Knitter's Pride. This is a rainbow kit, but they, they used to do them in white as well. I don't know whether they still do, but they come in a box like that and they come, they basically have, it's a plastic thing with these kind of combs. And these are quite sharp actually. They come in like the two sizes. They come in like a mixed pack of two sizes. Um, these can be used to do straight edges, curved edges. If you're going to do a straight edge that you want to stretch and you need to put them right next to each other, so you'll need quite a few. Um, if you're going to do a curved edge, you also may need to put them straight next to each other. So while you can block a whole shawl or a sweater or something with these, 
um, you will probably need a couple of packs of these. You may also want to consider getting some blocking wires. So I didn't bring my blocking wires upstairs with me because they're stored downstairs. But they're long metal wires um, that you use to thread through the edge of your knitting. Like I said, I have several blocking videos on my website showing you how to block lace shawls, how to block sweaters and how I use all these different tools uh, when I block things. So I will put the link to that below and you can uh, on the tutorials page on my website. If you scroll down, there is a section just for all my blocking videos so you can go there and have a look. One thing I didn't mention, which I probably should have, is this. Um, this is a needle gauge. You can get different types. This is a quite a basic one. I can't remember what the brand is, but loads of yarn shops sell these. It has uh, millimeter sizes and US sizes and imperial. No, it doesn't. Hang on. So millimeter U oh yes it does it's got millimeter us and imperial but imperial i assume they mean like the old british sizes um and then it's got ruler on the edge as well it's got centimeters and inches it goes from two millimeter to 10 millimeter us zero to us 15. also quite good if you um want to know what your size is in a different uh, measuring system so if i want to put in my needle Let's see, so that is a three millimeter, uh, which is a US size three, according to this. You can find that information online as well. But some of the interchangeable needles and some of the fixed circular needles, sometimes the uh, number, the needle size will rub off. On these, they don't rub off, but they are gray on this silver background. So sometimes it can be difficult to see especially if your eyes aren't the greatest. <laughs> so sometimes I do find it quicker just to get my needle gauge out and check the size that way. Other things that you may want to consider that probably aren't essential, although I don't know, they might be essential, are things like a notebook. You might want to keep a notebook to keep notes of where you are in your pattern. Um, some people basically rewrite their whole pattern into a language that they can understand. Or they might want to keep track of changes to the pattern or where they are in the pattern things like that so you might want a notebook if you're going to keep specific notes about the pattern you're working on like i'm stopping on row 10 that kind of thing then i would keep the notebook with your knitting in your knitting bag so you don't forget if you put it down for a while so you might want to get several small notebooks so you can keep one in each project bag you might want to get a pen or a pencil Pencil are good because you can rub it out. Pen is obviously good because it's permanent. You might want to mark a pen. And you may also want to get a um, washi tape. So washi tape is a paper tape that is non-stick. So when you stick it on something, stick it on here, you can pull it off quick easily without it like ripping your paper apart. So I like uh, washing tape to keep track of where I am in a pattern. So if you're knitting from a chart, you can actually use the washi tape to work out which row you're on. Just having a look to see if I have a knitting chart near me. Oh, yes, I do. No, I don't. Have I got a... Right, let's have a look. So let me just... So on this pattern here, for example, I might want to... If I'm struggling to see what row I'm on, can't do this. Uh, I can put washi tape above or below the row I'm on. You probably want to put it on the row above because it's useful to see the rows below. Then you can just rub, rip it off and move it up when you need to. So washi tape can be quite useful um, to keep track of where you are. Also mark other things in the pattern. So if you're stopping for the day and you're worried about finding where you are in the pattern the next day you can put a washi tape there it's less permanent than marking it with a pen also be careful about marking your printed patterns if that's your original copy so if you buy a printed copy like this careful about writing on it because sometimes patterns can get in a right mess especially if it comes in and out of your project bags so when you if you buy a printed pattern i would photocopy it if you can or if you buy it online, then you will get a PDF and then you can print it out 
how many times you want but in my experience these can get a little bit tatty and then it can be difficult especially if you made loads of notes over them it can be difficult to see what you're writing so when i recorded my essential knitting kit video i forgot something very important so i thought i would just record a little bit of an extra bit and i'd insert it i'm not sure if i'll insert it at the beginning or at the end but you'll find out when you watch this video so the thing i forgot that i use a lot is a small set of scales so these scales um I bought I bought the first one at a knitting show I got two of these I bought one at a knitting show from a store holder and then a few months later I ordered uh, one from her website I'm not sure which store holder it was I can't remember it's quite a few years ago it did have a lid that kind of opened up but that's broken off it also had a lid on the battery compartment which also broke off some time ago and it also came in like a plastic uh, not plastic black sleeve that I could slip it into to protect it a bit um, I got two of these I got one in my office and one downstairs next to my in my knitting bag um, where I do most of my knitting and I take it with me on holiday a lot I use it a lot it is really good uh, to have something that will weigh small amounts so you can use your kitchen scales if you want to weigh large amounts I've also got a set of kitchen scales in my office um, that's mainly to weigh like garments and shawls and design you know projects when i finish knitting them because i need to know an accurate amount of yarn use for the knitting pattern but small set of scales is really useful one of the batteries just fell out small set of scales is really useful to weigh swatches and also to weigh small amounts of yarn so i quite often when i'm knitting for example a shawl and i'm wondering whether i've got enough left to knit another repeat of the pattern before i have to start the edging or cast off i can then weigh how much one pattern repeat takes so i weigh it before i knit a pattern repeat and then i weigh it afterwards and then i can use that to help me work out when i need to cast off for example um, I also use a lot of waist swatches that's probably what I use it most for in my office because I need to know the weight of a swatch in order to work out how much yarn I'm going to need for a design um, so I use these really a lot and I think they're really useful bigger scales quite often won't weigh small enough amounts so quite often when I knit for example a shawl in fine lace yarn one repeat can weigh maybe a gram or one and a half gram and weighing that on bigger scales can be quite difficult so a set of scales that weigh small amounts is really useful it helps to make sure that you don't run out of yarn also because they're so small um, they're easy to pop in your knitting bag for on the go knitting or even take on holiday this one is mercury Di digital pocket scales it takes two AA battery AAA batteries two AAA batteries as you can see one fell out uh, and max capacity is 300 grams and it weighs down to 0 0.01 gram so you need something that weighs small amounts and also if I want to weigh things like beads um, that kind of thing these are really useful um, scales so I use this a lot so I do recommend that you get yourself a small set of scales these are smaller than my hand I've got big hands um, smaller than my phone I would say probably like a third maybe half the size of my phone screen no probably two thirds the size of my phone screen i don't know smaller than my phone anyway um and i need to get a pair of new ones because these are broken and every time i pick them up the battery falls out so i need to get some new ones anyway i just wanted to add that to my essential knitting kit because i take it with me every time i travel um, when I go on holiday I take it with me in case there aren't any scales where I'm going if I'm going on like a short break uh, to teach and things like that and I think I may need it I take it with me um, have one in my office have one next to my knitting chair and I use it several times a week so very very useful to me so I just wanted to add that so I hope that was useful and um, let me know what's in your essential knitting kit by the way um, the shawl I'm wearing, it's a little bit chilly today and I was a bit cold when I started The shawl I'm wearing is my um, Port Quinn shawl Let me just go down a bit so you can see it um, I will take it off in a minute It's knitted in two balls of Sabreville cotton It actually has the label on it from the last show I did It was in my box of shawls by my feet and I just grabbed the top one to put on um, 
but it's a uh, asymmetric crescent one with these um, dropped uh, crossed crisscross stitches. So I wore this shawl a lot. I think it's last winter or the winter before because it's quite small and it fits quite nicely under my coat and it's cotton so it's not too hot but it's warm enough. Um, I'll put the link to that below as well. So tell me what's in your essential knitting kit. Uh, tell me if you've used any of the tools that I use and you find them useful. Tell me if there's anything you find useful and that you find essential that I haven't mentioned. Leave me a comment below. If you haven't subscribed already, please consider subscribing. And thank you very much for watching. I'm sorry this video got a little bit longer than what I planned, but I hope it was useful for you. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.